Hello and welcome to the episode 230 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today the Beatles were moved to a new accommodation. They were on three stages for three different American tours and they were busy completing Abbey Road. On the 18th of August 1960, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed at the Indra Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for the second of 48 nights. It was then that their manager Alan Williams incited them to make it a show. The phrase was picked up by venue owner Bruno Koschmeider, who, in broken English, kept screaming Mac Show Beatles for the entire duration of their first residency in town. Earlier in the day, the lads were moved to their new living quarters, a room behind the screen of the Bambi Film Kunst Theatre Cinema, which showed western flicks all day. The room had all the comforts you might expect. It was old and dingy, with wallpaper peeling off and without heating. But at least it was next to the toilets. You could smell the quote-unquote aroma of stardom all day long. Since there was no kitchen and the Beatles had no money, the first payment was due after a week, the Beatles started to eat at the British Sailors' Society. Cornflakes and milk offered by the manager, Mr. Oak. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums and Paul McCartney now on bass, had a double engagement in Liverpool, a lunchtime gig at the Cavern Club and a nighttime performance at the Aintree Institute. Moving on to 1962, we find the lads performing at the Holm Hall in Birkenhead with one important change. This was the first time that the Beatles had their official lineup. George Harrison on lead guitar and vocals, John Lennon on rhythm guitar, harmonica and vocals, Paul McCartney on bass and vocals, and their new drummer and singer, Ringo Starr. The four had just enough time to have a two-hour rehearsal before hitting the stage at 10 pm sharp as the final attraction in the local Horticultural Society's 17th annual dance event. It was not the first time they had been together on a stage, though. We covered that in episode 36 of What A Fab Day. 18th of August 1963. The Beatles reached the Alpha Television Studios in Birmingham, where they filmed an appearance for ABC Television's Lucky Star Summer Spin. The show aired on the 24th of August between 6.05 and 6.45 pm in most of the UK, so the band miming a performance of She Loves You and I'll Get You. After the recording, the Beatles reached the Princess Theatre in Torquay for another two-show night. In 1964, the Beatles flew out of London at noon and arrived in San Francisco, California at 6.25 pm local time after two brief stops in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and Los Angeles, California. They were received by 9,000 hysterical screaming fans. The band was led into a fenced enclosure to allow the press to photograph them while keeping the public at bay, but the crazed fans started to push and pull the fans, some of them hurting themselves. The Beatles managed to escape seconds before the whole structure collapsed, due to the shaking and weight of the fans. Still shaken for what had happened, George, John, Paul and Ringo were brought to their hotel with their manager Brian Epstein and their press officer Derek Taylor. The band had a suit on the 15th floor of the Hilton. Fans, guests, hotel personnel and police seemed to care only for them. A woman was mugged and hit unconscious on the sixth floor, and nobody intervened, hearing her screams and pleads for help, thinking that she was just another crazy Beatle fan trying to sneak in. It was the start of the Beatles' first American tour. Supported by the Bill Black Combo, the Exciters, the Righteous Brothers and Jackie DeShannon, 
The Fabs played 25 dates in United States and Canada, performing a set mainly comprising of Twist and Shout, You Can't Do That, All My Loving, She Loves You, Things We Said Today, Roll Over Beethoven, Can't Buy Me Love, If I Fell, I Want to Hold Your Hand, Boys, A Hard Day's Night, and Long Tall Sally. One year later, in 1965, the Beatles were busy with their second North American tour, playing one show at the Atlanta Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, in front of 30,000 fans. The concert was remarkable because of the presence of speakers on the stage, allowing the band to hear themselves playing live for the first time in a while. Moving on to 1966, we get the third Beatles North American tour. On this date, the Fabs flew from Toronto, Canada, into Boston, Massachusetts, landing in the afternoon. Their one show in town at 8 pm was held at the Suffolk Downs Racetrack, a horse racing course in front of 25,000 people. The road to 25,000 fans is still very long here, but there's still a lot you, gentle listener, can do to facilitate the production of further music-related content. Visit www.simonmas.com support if you want to give me a hand in any way, or, well, don't. It's your call, but wouldn't the internet be nicer if you could get another perspective on music history, music theory, music business, and so on? Act today! Be fab and make the difference. Thank you! On the 18th of August 1969, between 2.30 and 10.30 pm, Paul McCartney overdubbed the piano part on the end at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road. In the same session, the staff completed two stereo mixdowns for Golden Slumbers Carry That Weight and six for the end. Talking about the end, it's time to close this episode. Join me tomorrow for more stories about the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.